The last thing I want to touch on is a little bit of this concept of the bones. If you've seen stuff out in the yoga industry or biomechanics or movement trainings and stuff about the unique nature of bones, if we were to take a whole bunch of different tibias and femurs, tibial plateau, which is what most of your knee rests on, or all of your knee rests on, and then the, the femur and the condyles that come on down to it, If we were to look at 10, maybe even just, uh, maybe 100, maybe to get really, really clear, we would see that there is a lot of difference in the shape of the bones. So if this is our femur, I didn't quite draw that to spec, sorry about that. That's a little bit better. Looks a little bit like Snoopy. So if we were to look at that femur, and we could do this with arguably all the bones in the body. This, the skeleton that I use a lot in trainings and workshops is pretty much the same skeleton that I see in most of the studios, sometimes even in foreign countries as well. And they've built this skeleton in a box and said this is approximately the average shape of the bones and the angles of the bones. But if we really get close and look at that, and you can find some online pictures and images. Uh, oh, I'm forgetting his name, but uh, there's a very popular gentleman from Yin Yoga who does a great presentation on this. Uh, I'm forgetting the name. If this is up on YouTube and you see it, feel free. Paul Greeley. Now you don't have to post it on there. Paul Greeley. But if we were to look at the shape of this bone and we took a number of these, what we'd start to see is that some people have a shorter neck before they get to the head of their femur. Some people's femurs are at a different angle. As we go down through the bone, if we were to say that this is, you know, the shape of their upper part, some people just have a natural twist and rotation as we go down the shaft. And so if we line their knee up, if we look right at the inside of the condyles and the tibial plateau, and we line it up for the health of that, what we might see is a really different angle at the, the head and neck of the femur. We also might look down at the tibia and see the exact same thing, that some people in their tibia have an entirely different amount I didn't, I messed up the bottom. That they have a really different amount of rotation as they go down that tibial shaft. Because of that, it's really hard to say, in fact, I, I wouldn't promote this anyway, that you should always have your foot going exactly the direction as your femur. And this is one of the ideas that, you know, is pretty common for a while. And if your femur went this direction, then your foot should be pointed in this direction as well. We should have your toes, generally something right inside the third toe, going the exact same direction as your knee. And that was really, really common. Now, because we don't know the exact inside of the joint, it's hard to say that that's the healthiest. And it's very easy if somebody had quite different bone rotation angles, that if you force them or encourage them to do this, they would be creating twist within their own knee. And that, that wouldn't be a very healthy thing. They might never have an injury, it might never cause a problem, but it increases the odds that we develop some complications. So, here's what I would offer. There are, if you go through a lot of trainings, there are some minor things that you can look at. You can look at some small landmarks and get clues. As a generality, the foot pointing more the direction that the femur goes is a healthy movement concept. And the basic reason on that is your foot is part of your walking and it's intended to help you push down and launch you forward. 
So if your foot is traveling that direction, and part of your knee is traveling that direction, and you're walking that direction, every time your foot pushes, it creates a little bit of a turn all the way up through those joints. And even if your joints are built for rotation, that's going to add to some torque in some of those joints. Now, if your bones are shaped that way, and you force them straight ahead, again, you'll also add torque into some of those joints, and this could be even worse than, than just having your foot go off to the side. So there is an intent, there is, a re, there is a good reason to begin to orient the appendages into the direction that you're moving, and that goes all the way down to the tips of your toes. But with that curveball of potential different bone shapes, we have to be really careful in forcing that situation. Here's one of the things that I can tell you. When we go to walk or squat or sit or stand up, there are some pieces. Now this is more for something, if you're walking up a flight of steps, we can take each step as an individual basis. If you're squatting and standing up, if you're sitting and standing up, and to a small degree, some of the walking stuff. There is an important thing. If your foot is here, the best place for you to push down is with your knee over the foot. And that's just a physics thing. If I'm going to be using muscles and creating a downward force, I want that downward force to go as directly down as possible. If, I, if I'm walking, my knee goes out over my foot, my, there is a downward force at slight angles. And if I want to go forward, <coughs> part of that downward force could lean a little forward and then push down and back, and that will help me go forward. But if I have a knee, see this, would, this, is our, this is our estimated vertical. If I have a knee that is much more over here, and my downward force coming through the knee travels this direction, that's going to make the knee slightly go this direction. Every time I use the muscles to push, it might be only moments and it might not be very intense, but given a lifetime or an intense activity, every time I go to push down, I'm going to push the knee and displace some of these tissues even more. Now, I don't always have to rotate the foot the exact same direction as the femur. By the way, this also plays out if your knee is too far off to the side. There's a little bit of range that we can do with that. But usually, your best power place is to push directly down. So whether or not you rotate the foot so that it's the direction of the femur, is a, if that's a hard one to say. Whether or not we should do that, I'm going to tend to say, very rarely am I going to go in that direction as a yoga teacher. But I am definitely going to promote, even if the foot is slightly rotated, and it looks like the knee is in a pretty healthy alignment, I want that knee right in that target zone, right above the foot and ankle. That I definitely want to create. So if I do that second warrior pose and I create a habit and a tendency to move my knee out from being above the base, I've lost a lot of my function and power and durability and things like that. So I definitely want to try to get that knee over my base. On the back leg, it's an extended leg, it's a little bit different. But on that front leg, anytime I'm in that lunge or squat position, I definitely want to get that knee to come more up over the foot. If I'm in chair pose, there's a certain amount of the knee going forward that, that comes into play. But I still want the knee in that same line as the foot, even if from the side, I've taken the knee slightly forward. Yeah, and that's a whole other discussion and the flexion and extension stuff. Although I did do a uh, report that might still be out on the internet about an overhead squat thing. Uh, that's an old assignment. And if you do catch it, I hope you enjoy it. There's a little bit of humor in it. So the forward direction, that's a different topic. This is looking in and talking about some of the biomechanics more in the rotation. So one more time. 
Whether or not you want to tell somebody to rotate their foot exactly the direction that their femur goes, that's something that I've loosened up on a ton in the last 10 to 15 years, and it seems to be going fantastic. In fact, I think we've done better without trying to make everyone's feet go in that forward direction. That said, we see all sorts of other tendencies where the knees fall in and out, which is what we talked about earlier, and that breeds all sorts of problems. So minimizing how far they go, maybe developing the flexibility and the strength to not just minimize, but maintain the position so it doesn't keep getting farther out, or possibly, although this isn't always the goal, sometimes it happens, developing the strength and mobility, the coordination and the habit, to even return it back to a habit where we do center that up for that much more direct line of push straight down through the foundation. If you're into all this, this does increase the stability of your foundation. This can help with things like ground force react, creating a stronger ground force reaction and things like this. In yoga, sometimes you hear the concept root to rise, which is still push down in order to help things either go up or push down so that you can go down with more control or push down so that you stop falling down. So all of those depend on the positional relationship that we have in these bones and parts of the knees. All right, there's your intro to knee biomechanics. I hope that helps out. It doesn't necessarily tell you how to do a yoga pose, but it might give you some food for thought in what you do in the yoga pose and why you practice the pose the way that you do. All right, this is Adam Ballinger. I hope that was good for you. It was good for me.